Elon Musk has officially unveiled the production Tesla Semi and commenced first deliveries to PepsiCo, while spectators are focused on the three-year delay between expected deliveries which were initially set for 2019 versus hitting customer hands today, Tesla has had time to build out its vast infrastructure in preparation for the launch of the Semi, while the rest of the industry has effectively stood still. Representatives from Pepsi were absolutely thrilled to receive their new Class A trucks, which will save them hundreds of thousands of dollars over the next few years, per truck. Traditional truck manufacturers have watched for five years since the original Tesla Semi announcement in 2017 in complete disbelief, doubting the Semi truck's capabilities at every step of the way. Back in 2018, the head of Daimler's truck division, Martin Dome, stated, if Tesla really delivers on this promise, we'll obviously buy two trucks, one to take apart and one to test, because if that happens, something has passed us by. But for now, the same laws of physics apply in Germany and in California. Daimler is the world's largest truck maker and has dominant positions in North America and in Europe with its heavy-duty truck brands such as Freightliner and Mercedes. They have the most to lose. If their strategy is to reverse engineer a Tesla Semi, there's certainly a long wait list to get one, and by the time they do, Tesla will be much further ahead on its path to scaling and gaining market share. A large part of Tesla's intellectual property isn't even in the truck itself, but rather inside the factory and within the data of its current fleet. The head of Daimler Trucking even confirmed this in his 2018 statement by saying that trucks have to run for 1.5 million miles and then there's a used truck buyer too after that. We don't know for sure how batteries for trucks will react after being in use for 4-5 to five years. It's very complex. That's because Daimler is just starting with electric trucks. While Tesla has data from its Model S vehicles and its accompanying batteries going back over a decade, Tesla has a proven track record of already building all of the pieces of technology that go into the Tesla Semi, which they're leveraging from their other vehicles. They highlighted 50 billion miles driven using their in-house design and manufacture drive units. Tesla has already built multiple versions of their motors over the years, and Elon Musk has confirmed that the carbon-sleeved Plaid motors already being used in the Model S and Model X Plaid versions, which absolutely destroy every other electric motor on the market with an insane power curve, will be placed inside the Tesla Semi. They've also delivered 3.2 million infotainment units, which corresponds to the total number of Tesla vehicles that the company has delivered in its lifetime as of the end of the most recent quarter. Tesla also has experience building their own efficient heat pumps and inverters, and we'll soon see why this is an extremely important point. While most OEMs purchase their vehicle components from third-party suppliers in a process that Elon Musk calls catalog engineering, and therefore they lack vertical integration, a deficiency which will be amplified in the large electric truck space which requires an ultra-efficient design. In 2020, Microsoft founder Bill Gates claimed that the problem is that batteries are big and heavy. The more weight you're trying to move, the more batteries you need to power the vehicle. But the more batteries you use, the more weight you add, and the more power you need. Even with big breakthroughs in battery technology, electric vehicles will probably never be a practical solution for things like 18-wheelers, cargo ships, and passenger jets. Electricity works when you need to cover short distances, but we need a different solution for heavy, long-haul vehicles. But at the Tesla Semi truck delivery event this week, Elon Musk stated that Tesla has done it, and the company posted an unedited video of a 500-mile drive on a single charge. In contrast, Freightliner, the top truck brand in the United States, their eCascadia has a maximum range less than half of the Tesla Semi. The Semi is on a whole different level as Tesla steps up its game even further, reaching into the future and bringing its technology into today. On Tesla's website, it shows that Semi's efficiency is less than 2 kilowatt hours per mile. 
So for the last few years, most of the estimates have assumed a one megawatt hour battery when calculating the weight or the charging speed of the vehicle. But Elon Musk has grossly underpromised and overdelivered as the semi's efficiency is far better than two kilowatt hours per mile and instead resides at 1.7 kilowatt hours per mile, which is 15% superior. With a 500 mile range, this means that the battery pack size is 850 kilowatt hours. Elon Musk sees a clear path to get to 1.6 and possibly 1.5 kilowatt hours per mile, which means that the battery can get even smaller, down to 800 kilowatt hours and possibly 750 kilowatt hours, which reduces weight, charge time since there's less battery to fill up, and fewer cells or battery materials are required, which greatly reduces cost. Current Tesla semis are not yet making use of Tesla's in-house 4680 cells, which could be the advantage that leads to a clear path which Elon Musk is referring to. The semis are said to use 2170 cells, which Tesla already produces at Giga Nevada, which have a high nickel-based chemistry for performance and high energy density. But Tesla's path forward is not exactly to add new cells with higher energy density per se. Doing that would increase the battery pack size in kilowatt hours and could still be a great option for creating a truck with even more than 500 miles of range to compete with long haul diesel trucks. But Elon Musk is actually looking to decrease the battery pack size and try to squeeze out 500 miles of range with a much smaller pack at say 750 kilowatt hours. Switching to 4680 cells in the future, perhaps if Panasonic starts building them at Tesla's Giga Nevada factory, would still help boost efficiency and could contribute to this target. According to a Wikipedia entry on the Tesla semi-truck page, third-party estimates call for a battery pack weight of over 11,000 kilograms or 26,000 pounds, which would on its own make up about a third of the 82,000 pound limit for a class eight truck in the United States. However, this appears to be completely wrong. The 85 kilowatt hour Model S battery pack weighs 1200 pounds. The Tesla semi pack is exactly 10 times larger and would therefore weigh 12,000 pounds, which is less than half of the aforementioned third party estimate. However, the Model S battery pack was using internal battery modules, which Tesla has gotten rid of in the current iterations of its new packs. Model S also uses over 7,000 18650 battery cells, which each have their own metal casings, adding even more dead weight. Moving to the 2170s and eventually to the 4680s means fewer, larger cells, for which a higher percentage is actually battery material rather than just casings. Furthermore, simply multiplying the Model S battery pack by 10 to get the semi pack doesn't take into consideration that Tesla isn't stacking 10 Model S battery packs together. They're building a single new larger pack, which only requires one external casing to hold everything together and not 10 separate packs. This is why vertical integration is so important because no one sells an 850 kilowatt hour battery pack and the efficiency of every part of the truck comes together to try and get this down even further. Now Tesla is using the triple plaid motor configuration along with the carbon sleeved rotors in the semi truck. They have likely expanded production of these proprietary motors for which they invented new machinery to wrap a carbon fiber sleeve capable of holding the motor together at extremely high RPM. It makes sense to bring this technology to more Tesla vehicles as increased scale could further reduce cost. A single motor is said to be more powerful than a diesel engine, and Tesla is putting in three of them for triple the power of any diesel truck on the road today. As demonstrated by Tesla, this allows a fully loaded Tesla Semi to actually accelerate up a 6% grade. Electric vehicles also have a big advantage in traction control since the torque of an electric motor is virtually instantaneous and can be controlled quickly and precisely being much more versatile than an internal combustion engine. This is why Elon Musk reiterated that jackknifing is impossible with the Tesla Semi, a feature that a diesel truck simply can't compete with. The Semi's motor configuration works as follows. The front wheels are not powered, and of the two rear axles, 
The first has two motors, so each wheel is individually powered, allowing them to spin independently, helping with traction and torque vectoring. Tesla calls these two motors their acceleration units, and they appear to have an extra gear as compared to the rear axle, which means a larger fixed gearing ratio that favors higher torque. With a larger gearing ratio, there's less RPM, but it's easier to spin a small gear into a big gear, and the two motors can boost acceleration from a standstill or going up a steep plane. This is why Elon Musk calls the semi a beast and compares it to an elephant moving like a cheetah. These acceleration units aren't used all the time. They're automatically engaged when the system determines that they're required, which saves energy when they're not in use. There's a mechanism to completely disconnect these motors when the power is cut so that the rear axle doesn't waste energy driving these unused motors and the transmission. The rear axle is what Tesla calls their highway drive unit and it's optimized more for range. Tesla does this with a slightly lower gearing ratio, meaning less torque but more RPM. This motor is always engaged but becomes more efficient at higher speeds. This is similar to a bicycle where starting in the lowest gear makes it easier to get going and to bike up a hill. But at higher speeds, it makes sense to switch to a higher gear so that less pedaling is needed. Tesla seems to just have this higher gear always connected and can add in their low gear acceleration units to help out when needed. Elon Musk calls the entire system a step change in technology in so many ways. And this brings us to Tesla's decision to move to a 1000 volt architecture, which will end up being a game changer, especially for charging speeds among other factors. Using a high voltage power supply is one way to vastly increase charging rates, though it's not such a simple change. The most common standard used in vehicles today is 400 volts, but there are already some 800 volt architecture vehicles on the road. For instance, the Kia EV6 is able to charge its 77 kilowatt hour battery from 10 to 80% in just 18 minutes at a 350 kilowatt charging station. The Porsche Taycan can charge its 93 kilowatt hour battery from 5% to 80% in 22 and a half minutes at a maximum power of 270 kilowatts, which is faster than the Model 3 despite the larger battery pack. For reference, the Tesla Model 3 performance is still impressive, capable of going from 10% to 80% state of charge in 25 minutes at a V3 supercharger, which uses 250 kilowatts of power. But the Tesla Semi, which has a battery pack that's more than 10 times the size of the Model 3, can get to 70% in 30 minutes, and that's in large part because Tesla is using a 1000 volt architecture with a 1 megawatt charger to give Semi a very reasonable charge time. What would be most interesting is the bombshell that Elon Musk dropped, which is that Cybertruck will be using the same architecture. The real limiting factor is the rate at which a single battery cell can be charged up, and then if Cybertruck can use that one megawatt of power to charge as many cells as it can in parallel, it may be able to achieve unprecedented charge rates for a vehicle of that size. However, even with a 1000 volt system at one megawatt of power, that's still 1000 amps being passed through the cables, which generates a lot of heat. In 2018, Tesla patented liquid-cooled charging connectors and actually brought it to the V3 superchargers. Their upcoming V4 chargers take it to the next level by surrounding the conductors with coolant tubes to pick up the heat and transfer it away from the wires. Dan Priestley, who gave the semi-truck presentation along with Elon Musk, said, You're actually immersing the conductor in the coolant. It means that we can really shove a lot of current in a very, very small place. So for those who have charged their cars at a V3 supercharger and the cables nice and maneuverable, it's the same thing here, but now we're just shoving a megawatt through it instead. And so the V4 charging connector will be the same size as the internal conductors are actually much smaller than the previous version but carry more power. And one advantage of the 1000 volt architecture is that wiring, even within the vehicle itself, can be made much smaller since it produces less heat and would thus weigh less and use less material, making it lower cost and more efficient. Now one of the main challenges with high voltages 
is that electronic components in the vehicle must meet higher isolation standards. Components must be redesigned to have safe distances between terminals to prevent arcing where the current can jump through the air from one conductive point to another. There's also a need of new verification processes to test these various components under these new safety standards. The other challenge is that all of the components of an EV must be compatible with each other, from the motors and battery to control systems and accessories. Even the charging stations need to be upgraded to take advantage of the new systems and make them interoperable. And so obtaining all of these components is one of the reasons why 800 volt architectures are being slowly adopted, not to even mention 1000 volts, which is even less so. But Tesla is in a unique position where they make all of their major components in-house. The motors, the batteries, the inverters, the charging stations, even the battery backups for the charging stations. And so vertical integration is once again a key strength in allowing Tesla to use whichever most efficient architecture they decide without having to rely on anyone else. Tesla also makes heavy use of semi-trucks to run its own business operations. They use them to transport and deliver vehicles, and they have trucks running 24-7 between Sparks, Nevada and Fremont, California, delivering batteries and other components. So they have their own feedback loop for continuing to improve the product. They aim to produce 50,000 electric semi-trucks in 2024, while their competitors are struggling to make electric trucks that are simply inferior, with massively less range, no 1000 volt architecture, and no V4 supercharger capabilities for fast charging. Tesla's semi-truck factory is situated right next to Giga Nevada, which pumps out batteries, while competitors lack batteries as a scarce resource. An example of this is evident in this recent headline titled, Tesla's Pepsi Semis Lose Out to Coke's Electric Renault Trucks, where Renault poked fun at Tesla in a video showing two workers putting up a semi billboard proclaiming it's the future of trucking, then driving off in an electric Renault truck. Unfortunately, they didn't get very far because the Renault trucks can only travel 124 miles per day. So it's in fact the opposite where Coke is missing out on Tesla's vehicles behind a long list of customers clamoring to get their hands on the Tesla Semi to actually improve their businesses and save money. The industry is currently dominated by several large diesel truck players who have been resting on their laurels making fun of Tesla's fake truck that defies physics. But now that it's here, Tesla will wreak havoc in the trucking industry. So do you think that Tesla will be able to scale its vehicles to 50,000 units per year by 2024? And is it possible for the semi-truck to be reverse engineered and copied, or does Tesla's infrastructure and technology advantage give them too much of a lead? Please hit the like button and subscribe, we would really appreciate that. And a huge shout out to all of our patrons that helped us support our channel. Your support helps us to continue to make great content. Thank you guys so much for watching.